A mass timber building is very commonly framed with timber beams, columns, floor panels, and roof panels, but oftentimes other materials are used for the vertical lateral force resisting systems. Is this due to a limitation in what the code allows? Is it due to designer inexperience with the options and how to use timber as a lateral force resisting system? Today's video is going to break down the options and explain how to use timber and non-timber vertical lateral force resisting systems in a mass timber build. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. Options for vertical lateral force resisting systems in mass timber buildings. Today, we're gonna to give you eight different options that are commonly used in mass timber projects, four that are wood or timber based, and four that are non wood or timber based. So jumping right into the four wood and timber options. Now, the first option is something that we see more and more commonly used in what we call a hybrid application where a structure is framed with a light wood frame, say two by six, wood stud bearing walls. This is often done in a multifamily application. And those wood stud bearing walls used for exterior walls, unit demising walls, corridor walls, are also used as shear walls. Now, this type of shear wall application is very common in structures that are light wood frame throughout, such as apartment buildings, hotels, student dormitories, in type five and type three construction. And the same design concepts apply when you're using mass timber floors as the diaphragm on top of those light wood frame walls. Of course, we're still limited to the 65 foot overall system height. That's from ASCE seven, but we have the same seismic response coefficient of six and a half. And in terms of the mass timber floor and roof diaphragm connections to these light wood frame shear walls, it is generally speaking a very simple connection of self-tapping screws, either installed up through the top plates to the underside of the mass timber floor and roof panel, or in some applications installed down through the mass timber floor roof panel into the top plates of the wall that bear it. All right, timber option number two, mass timber shear walls. Now, from a code perspective, the 2022 version of ASCE 7 and the 2021 version of the special design provisions for wind and seismic was the first version of the IBC reference standards that do allow and recognize the use of CLT shear walls. There are now two prescriptive options within ASCE 7, an R equals three and an R equals four option. Some of the main differences between those have to do with the aspect ratio of the individual panels, not the overall wall length, but the individual panels of mass timber panels that make up the entire shear wall section. The 2021 special design provisions for wind and seismic does provide prescriptive design guidance in terms of the connections of one panel to the next, as well as the shear wall panels to the adjacent floor panels. Now this system does rely on a platform framed style of CLT shear wall construction. CLT shear walls have been used in projects throughout the country. One such example is the Bowdoin College Center for Arctic Studies and Mills Hall. And I had a discussion with the structural engineer on that project. You can check out some of the design and detailing nuances in this video in the upper right hand corner. Timber option number three, mass timber rocking shear walls. Now this is a similar concept to the shear walls we discussed. However, it is creating more resiliency by implementing two distinct design scenarios. The first is a post tension rod or cable that runs down the center of the mass timber shear wall. The purpose of this rod is to bring the wall back to center as it rocks back and forth in a wind or seismic event. And the second unique application specific to mass timber rocking shear walls is the end hold downs or energy dissipation devices. The idea with these is as the wall overturns from one side to the next, again, in a wind or seismic event, these energy dissipation devices are absorbing that deflection and they are yielding as opposed to the overall wall failure. And then after the seismic or wind event, these end brackets can be unbolted, removed and new brackets installed to bring the building back up to serviceable conditions very quickly. There is currently a 10 story mass timber shake table under construction with shake table testing planned soon at the University of California, San Diego. And you can check out the link in the description below for more information on that series of shake table tests planned. Timber option number four is timber braced frames. Now this is an alternative to the commonly used structural steel braced frames, which of course we all know and are familiar with, whether it's X braces, chevron braces, or single diagonals. Timber braced frames can be used in similar applications where essentially you're replacing the HSS or wide flange steel brace shapes with a glue lamb shape. Some projects that have used this are the Apex Plaza in Charlottesville, Virginia, as well as the John Oliver Design Building at the UMass Amherst campus. 
And you can check out a conversation that I had with a structural engineer on both of those projects in this video right here. Now, the last two options that I mentioned there, the mass timber rocking shear walls and timber braced frames are not currently prescriptively recognized in IBC or its referenced standards. So engineers looking to use either of these design approaches for seismic and wind resistance would need to go through the process of an alternative means and methods request, evaluating the feasibility of using those with the building official in their specific jurisdiction. All right, and now moving on to the four non-timber based options, which we commonly see used for seismic and wind lateral force resisting systems in mass timber buildings. Number one, the concrete core system. This is very common application in low and mid-rise office and institutional buildings, as well as for taller multifamily buildings, buildings such as the 25-story Ascent in Milwaukee, the nine-story Intro in Cleveland. Again, it's a very common application in mass timber buildings where a CLT or other mass timber diaphragm is cantilevering out from these central cores and dragging forces back to them, oftentimes with some type of a steel plate installed on top of the mass timber floor and roof panels. And then that steel plate is anchored to the concrete core to drag those diaphragm forces back. In terms of code recognition, of course, concrete shear walls are prescriptively permitted by code in several different iterations as described in ASC E7. Non-timber option number two, steel braced frames. And this includes several iterations, just standard steel braced frames, buckling restrained braced frames, moment frames, projects such as T3 in Atlanta, Carbon 12 in Portland, Oregon, and the Bullet Center in Seattle, Washington, all examples of projects which have used mass timber for floor and roof diaphragms and steel braced frames. Non-timber option number three is one that we see less commonly used, but some projects have used this application, and that is masonry shear walls. Now, masonry shear walls are not uncommon in lightwood frame construction, specifically acting as shaft walls. But in mass timber buildings, we are seeing several projects utilize masonry shear walls. Again, usually, if it is so, it's as a shaft wall and a shear wall combination. An example of such a project that has used this is the Brown Street project at Brown University. And the last option to mention is cold form steel stud shear walls using either X bracing or other sheathing products installed on the face of the studs to create shear panel stiffness. Now, something that hasn't been commonly used in mass timber construction to date, but some projects are expressing interest in doing so. Well, hopefully this roundup of options that are currently being used for vertical lateral force resisting systems in mass timber buildings is helpful to you as you evaluate the plethora of options that you can implement on your mass timber projects. Now, of course, today was really just an introduction to these topics. And if you are interested in exploring more, some of the detailing and design nuances associated with these different options and how they interact with mass timber diaphragms, please reach out. That's why Woodworks is here. We're happy to be a free resource to you the design, development, and construction communities. Well, I thank you so much for making it to the end of today's video. And until next time, we'll see you later.